All right, good evening and welcome to Football in Vivo on Club Deporte Season 2, Episode 16. We air every week on clubdeportes.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Football Austin. That's F-U-T-B-O-L Austin. Be sure to follow Club Deportes at Club Deportes. For all the latest and greatest sports news and commentary, you have to visit the happiest website on the internet these days. That's clubdeportes.com, where you find all the best Leon coverage. <laughs> the Conca <Leon>. champions. <laughs> I am your host, Eric McCoy, and I am joined by a man disappointed the weather put on a better show than Austin FC on Saturday night. It's Jorge Chavez. Yeah, li- lightning is pretty. Hey, it is. It is. It is. It's uh, better looking than Austin FC's attack that these days. I think, <laughs> I think very, that's very fair nice. to oh, no. say. <laughs> now, hey, we have a special guest this week. Not going to forget to introduce the guest <laughs> this time as I did uh, previously because, hey, we've got expert freelance communicator, Laura Gallo, formerly of Telemundo, all kinds of great places. How's it going, <laughs> expert, Laura? Expert, oh my gosh. Expert, yeah. No, you're an, hey, no, around I'm these not. parts, no, you're no, an no. expert. You're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Laura. Glad uh, you could join Thank us. you. Thank you so much. It was, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're happy to have you. So just, just real quick, before we get into all the nitty and gritty with Austin FC, your background. So you've been with, uh, with Telemundo for a bit. You're also doing some, some freelance stuff right now. Just kind of... About your career in, in journalism and kind of what your passions are, what, what your areas of expertise are. Yeah, so I was with Telemundo. Before being with Telemundo, I was with CBS Austin. I was an awesome. assistant producer in the morning show. Then I became a producer with Telemundo for about two years uh, until last August. I've been covering Austin FC here and there. And then this year I've been like going... Like a lot. Uh, yes, yes. I've been Do going see the press to, box a lot. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've been going to the Austin FC and Austin FC too. Okay, yeah. so uh, now we, we were talking before the show. Yes. You, you're pretty passionate about Austin FC too, right? I like, love those guys. What do you love about Austin FC? Everything. Too? <laughs> Everything. Okay. The games are fun. The guys give it all. Mm-hmm. Like it's. It's mm-hmm. amazing the vibe that you get. Like you can hear the little kids chanting. <laughs> like they're big people. Uh, it's like it's fun. What it's makes really the fun. Austin FC two experience different from the Austin FC experience? Uh, like I say, the kids, the more involvement of the kids, the more of a family atmosphere. Yes, definitely. So uh, less beer showers is, is that? Yeah, there's no, beer there's no <laughs> beer showers. There's no, no beer, beer showers. showers. Okay. Okay. No yeah. beer showers. But you can hear them singing. Dale, yeah. Dale, like with their cute voices, <laughs> it's just like beautiful. <laughs> they have like customs. You gotta, you gotta and, know from somewhere. So yeah, might as well no, throw them there. no, no. It's really, it's really cute. Uh, even the the. The ball service is uh, like all kids from the, I think it's from the academy. It looks so cute. So, yeah. Uh, and they play really well. So, hey, I was, I was gonna get so get that's, to that. that's yeah, I think, the big that, difference between yeah, us and Yeah, that's probably a big FC difference because you got to look at it probably from their perspective. They want to impress the coaching staff mm-hmm. because Josh Wolf goes to these things. He does. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah, he does. I was going to ask about that. I've seen him He's, sometimes. We've like seen the pictures kid. of him sometimes in the middle of the thing with all the photographers. And even the guys. Sometimes way over there yeah, in the corner. Yeah. And even the guys, no? I mean, we got to remember, like, Danny goes. He's been, I've because seen him there. I think they're friends with Damien Lass and We're all of them. Probably a little closer than any of some of these Damien Lass. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They are. So uh, it's kind of cool because I've seen I see them going uh-huh. like a lot one time i saw diego with his family and then he was like even like dog, taking i've seen him with his even dog, taking yeah. uh videos and pictures of the guys so he was like yeah he was a videographer for a second too wow. so yeah no That's you see impressive. it all now is there any austin fc2 player you think could make an impact with uh, with the big team david <laughs> David Rodriguez. David right? Rodriguez. Yes. Oh my God! I tell everybody he's the next Chicharito. Watch him. Okay. Really? Watch him. Remember you heard it here me today. first. And I told oh. my husband last Friday that I went to the game. Uh, oh my gosh, he did oh, amazing. His technique with the ball. Uh, he just goes. He's fast. He's really fast. Trust me. Mm. That kiddo will be in the Mexican team and. I'll tell you today, even if it, as a substitute or wow. something, he Boy, is coming strong. What is it? June, June wow. the fifth. June the fifth. Remember me. 
And, he he yeah, might. And this he, is, he has such a this good is talent. a team that has Cristo Vela in it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of, I, of I've, Vela. I've seen him, uh, but David makes a huge difference, honestly, mm-hmm. on, on that So team. next to Chirito, I'm guessing he's a striker, right? So, yeah, he is. Okay, and he's a forward. See, he's a forward. He's lacking, kind of lacking a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> lacking in the, the, in in the, the forward striker, department. In the striker right department. So, yeah, but, I like uh, I like your thinking here. And Laura. that's the reason why he got signed temporarily with Austin FC because I'm I mean clearly yeah. it would have it would be blind Josh <laughs> if he didn't see him. So, uh, what do you think that season has to go a little worse for for us as as a fan base to start seeing these guys on the actual FC roster? Or you think uh, it's, it's hard? I don't know. It's really hard. It's really hard. But let me tell you, that kid is going to be ready like in a year. He's, okay, we're, we're going to hold you to it here. Yeah, gonna, if, if they I'm don't, not, we're going to have to have you back not, on to defend this. I'm opinion. not exaggerating. So you, He's, he is the next. You Chichari said you've watched our show before, so you know we're right about everything all the time on the show. <laughs> so you have a high standard of accuracy. <laughs> Look at that. What do you like? What's, what's, what's the last thing about here? <laughs> no, I don't know. We have high standards that we, we hold. I mean, I just I just say what I, what I see, honestly. He's he's great. There is an other couple. I, I really like uh, E.J. Johnson. He is fast. He's furious. He throws everything when he's in the pitch. Um, Noel, too. He's really he's good. The, he's yeah, like, he was yeah, the second... Uh, first round pick. He's actually on loan. E.J. Johnson. Really? Yeah, okay. he's actually came in f- uh, to Austin FC mm-hmm. uh, to uh, loan. I, I, I'm pretty bad with names, but I think it's Fedre. Fedre. I actually like... C.J. Fadri. Fadri. Yes, he's, he's... I was going to ask about him, he's too. He's really good. He makes a he, good difference. No, all of those guys, like, number two, I think it's Toure. Oh, he's amazing in the midfield. He's, he's, he's great. He well, sounds like the whole team's great. So, yeah. yeah Kip Keller has been. And Kip, when I went to, to the game, Kip Keller oh, actually yeah, yeah. had a very nice, very nice. Kip Keller is yeah. amazing. I think Damian, uh, he, he's a really good like leader. He like, why the fuck? Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. Family like, show. Family, like, show. Family yeah, show. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he'll be like. On to the guys on his yeah, defense. Yeah, so no, good. no, no, no. It's it's amazing. Uh, Coach Brad, he will uh, move whoever or he needs to move, and then it will work. So okay. that's one of the reasons why in the other show uh, with Jorge, I say, why not to have Brett Lodley? <laughs> a coach sure. making decisions at work. Who, wow, interesting! Who knows? What a concept. No, we'll probably get I'm to kidding, that a little but later. He's, re- he's he's really good. Um, he, I actually told the uh, we're Austin. Like I posted, and then I told the guys we're, we're Austin on thir- on Friday. Hey, Keith Keller, he's gonna play, or he's gonna be a substitute on f- on Saturday. I well, call he was it. on the bench on Saturday. Yeah, because he, he was yeah. sitting down next to me. He couldn't watch. Uh, he couldn't play the game on Friday. Mm. Uh, but then I asked Brad, uh, like how he moved it, and I mean he didn't receive a ball, so it was. He did good. So. Results are results. Hey, I, I am all here for the Kip Keller redemption Absolutely, story. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I would really I like agree, to say I that. agree. I yeah, agree. Yeah. I think, hey, you, you can be condemned for, for yeah, one mistake. Well, yeah. uh, so he's a great defense. He's fast. He can go really quick to the middle with these guys. Uh, he's, he's like, good. Um, maybe he gets a little tired, like, after, like, the – well, he's a, very moment, high, yeah, he's, he's a very high energy guy. But he's guy. had, like, so, good. So. And, and, he, and previously, he was went to, when he went to college, mostly his work was on defense, a central, mm-hmm. central back. And he is good. But before that, in high school, he was an actual, he was a midfielder. So he's, he, he's, I can he's see still, it. I he's can still see got that, you that, can, that you offensive that, mentality. Right? I yeah. can see it. Yeah. I can see because he will go all the way up to the middle. Yeah. And then without... Maybe no it's problems. just the hair, but I get David Luiz vibes from Kip Keller a bit. Excitable, willing yeah, to go on an adventure at times. See what happens. You, you know, tick, tick and I, I say that as someone who, who loves David Luiz. He's yeah, he's a David Luiz. I think sorry, he's sort of I, I that. He's in the Chinese League right now. I have no idea. That sounds so he's, probably he's right. He's gone. But, uh, <laughs> it's too bad. It's but too okay, bad. We, uh, let's get to the big yeah. club here. Yeah. There's no David Alvarez. 
with us this week, as you may have noticed. David is off in Chile. Yeah. He's on a quest for center backs right now. Right. He is looking for as I'm many sure center backs as he can I'm find. I'm sure Austin FC will get a call here. from him. Yes. I'm, I'm sure they will. Yes. I'm sure they He's a man who likes to make sure his voice gets heard. David. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> that, is, that is for Hi, sure. Hi, David. <laughs> uh, uh, but it was a week of uh, mixed fortunes uh, for Austin FC this past week as they defeated Minnesota United on Wednesday night, 2-1. to one. Surprisingly. Surprisingly, yeah. yeah. Beat a very good Minnesota United team, 2-1, only to follow that up with a weather-delayed 2-1 defeat against RSL, Real Salt Lake, yeah. on two Saturday hours. night. Yeah, two hours. You guys were there. I, I was not mm-hmm. at this game, so I, I, can't, I can't. I watched it, the replay on delay. I could just hit fast-forward to yeah. that little weather delay. Yeah, it was, <laughs> that, that, that was actually it was, a way to watch it was this game. two hours. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's what I heard. Delay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, that sounded a little rough. Um, but let's go ahead and get into it. Um, Jared, you have the, the starting. 11 if we could get that put up on the screen here I want to get you guys' thoughts on this and we'll get into the highlights uh, the uh, the RSL uh, Real Salt Lake from uh, from Saturday there we go okay Laura you're, you're the guest of honor here what what stands out to you what do you like what do you not like we saw a move away from the 3-4-3 for this game it was back to more of a, a standard back four did you like that did you not like that what, what was going on I actually you? like it okay. I, I, I actually thought that it would I mean, Ring, uh, he's two in the back. So you would prefer uh, Ring in midfield? I do. There is a bit of a crisis, yeah. though, with, with the, the center back situation right now. So he's kind of, he's back always there. has been. <laughs> this is like one season. of the things that I say from the very beginning. Bring a good midfield. Danny does a good job maybe mm-hmm. moving the ball. Uh, Johan is very good defending. You always ask about I Johan, pers- don't I you? Do. Always. I always do. do. I like him. I think he's a worth player. Fellow Colombians. Uh-huh. I Stick saw together. him playing uh, in, in Colombia. And I truly believe that he is good. Uh, he could have had more minutes, honestly. But I heard you ask that know, at the press conference. We know <laughs> we know. he he said that he wanted it to put, I can't pronounce his name, uh, Jafal, number 22. Uh, I personally uh, think that he could like he wanted it to move forward uh, with that change. That's what he said. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure because about it. as soon as he changed, if you see the videotapes, the goal comes in the middle. So. Well, yeah, I do think Jafal is a bit of a different profile of midfielder. He definitely wants to get a, a bit more forward than Valencia. He's, and I, he's, think, I think he's more offensive-minded. Yeah, so so he wants to chasing the match forward. at that point. I, I, I can understand. But in that moment, I feel like we didn't need that. As I, I, think, I, I think it could have been when he, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not that excited. Because I, I, the only thing I'll say is if you're chasing the game, you wouldn't want the more attack-minded midfielder out there to, to try and get that goal as opposed to the more defensive-minded midfielder. Now, hindsight. Don't change you know. midfielder. Okay, <laughs> no. don't change midfielder for midfielders. If you really want to do that, if you really want to go for the goal, uh-huh. you're going to put somebody in the front. Like, well. straight up. You're going to change that lineup. Like Tigres. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I love when Tigres went all the way for the final. It was just like I hate that's. It. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, still I'm not, sorry. I'm still I, not was, over I was actually going for Chivas, <laughs> but yes. uh, they did a f- an amazing job <laughs> they, in that they, sense. And then that's what you post. need to do. Yeah. I mean, Don't change well, man for man. Okay. Just, that that's an interesting point, and, and that was a good question. I think was raised by Jorge Teralda in the yes. press conference, asking yeah, about did. why you don't know, maybe bring on an extra attacker as opposed to, like you said, I like for like change in midfield. I, I do think the profile is a bit different. I can understand why Wolf would do it, but ultimately, you're right. Didn't end up working out because the goal came kind of from a little bit of midfield blundering <laughs> that took yeah. place. It was. Now, here's a question I have. Um, with that starting 11, there was a name that really stood out to me that wasn't on that starting 11, and that was Giassi Zardes, who I think has been, been playing quite well of late. Yep. Three goals in his last five appearances. Only played 61 minutes on, on Wednesday night. Okay, maybe you don't want to start him, but why is Will Bruin coming on in, instead of Zardes when, when you're needing a goal late in that game? Yeah. Uh, maybe he saw in Urruti that he could score. I, I honestly... Both of them are good, and I mean we've seen Ruti put the the team on his back all the time. I really like him. He has guts. He can fight. He he's like the nice, Argentinian uh, bone arrow. Yeah, the bone arrow thing, So sure. I I 
I didn't mind. Yeah. I saw a lot of comments about that, like, mm -hmm. because uh, Saturdays has been having more uh, goals. He's, I feel like he's like, finally, statistically, finally starting to hit Statistically, stroke. like, he's been better. But maybe Wolf saw this the week during the week or something that he could. Yeah. Uh, Do you trust uh, uh, Wolf's judgment? On that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On that? Yeah. It didn't happen, unfortunately, for for, for Ruti. I mean, but I, I, I think not Josh Wolf is, isn't really the problem. I, mm -hmm. I think I think the roster, the, the guys that he has at his disposal mm -hmm. is, is just not up to par. Uh, I mean, but when you bring in a. a Will Bruin instead of uh, Jazzy Sardis. That, that's my real I, That was a head-scratcher to me. I, that was a little odd. Uh, I, I know Will Bruin's really a good player, too. Mm. He probably hasn't been given as many opportunities as no. he would probably like. But I was surprised Uruti started, uh, precisely because I thought uh, I thought the team sort of saw that, that Jazzy had a little bit of a hot streak going. Mm. Uh, he's been playing well lately. Um, he just scored his 100th goal, so... Mm. And he he really he said it himself many many times. He enjoys playing in front of Q two, in front mm -hmm. of the supporter section. How, how could you not? And, and so that's the reason he came. Even he the rivals, like even the rivals. <laughs> he he like came it. here as a rival wanting to play here. Uh -huh. So you know, I'm a little bit surprised that he didn't start instead of. A, Do you think we should Rudy read team? anything into it? Because to me, it makes like zero sense that he wouldn't um, at least come off the bench in this game. I, I, I hope I, this is I not Wolf it, I, like I putting him in a doghouse or no, something like that. I, I don't. I think no, it's, I think it's more think so. more of a of a season long management type thing. I think it's more about Josh being. This is what we're gonna try. This is this is what we're gonna try, and this is what we're gonna do. I think he overthinks it. Are you saying? I think he overthinks sometimes. He get he gets it in his head. Oh, I need to I need to mess with the other team, and he comes up with these ideas. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, oh, I'm going to start this guy instead of that guy because they think that I'm going to start the other guy. Mm -hmm. You and see, so, maybe. Now, Laura, you seem to be implying a stubbornness from from Josh Wolf. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. You think Josh Absolutely. Wolf is stubborn? I mean, wow. yeah. Uh, and like I, I totally say agree, yeah. before. Sometimes uh, I feel like there is no, I even in the press conference, you guys have been there. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't sense a, 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 a little bit of uh, own mistakes. Mm. He doesn't so own mistakes. I, I personally see mm. it uh, objectively. You can see it. Like if you go and watch the tapes, um, I told Jorge, and then I'm saying again, um, we have a, a coach at America de Cali. His name is uh, Guimaraes. And you can see a press conference if he, like, messes up with something. And he's like, yeah, I messed up doing that change. But then we try to manage it or whatever. So, like, he owns sometimes you like as that a coach. And a coach, that ability to kind of admit In any wrong. person. <laughs> in, in any person. In any life. Yeah, if person you mess up, job. you mess up. Own it. That's it. 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 Like, hey, how many times has Stuver has come out and say, we didn't do many, this. Many, many We times. didn't do that. We could... Danny, Danny do said that Danny said on 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 Friday on Saturday. Hey, we 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 need to work on. I don't know. Like I didn't want to throw him under the bus, but Redes kind of messed up in the past. Da 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 da. And he said so. Like that to me, it it's part of being a good athlete. Like I don't know. You were asking me about my background. Mm -hmm. Not a, not everybody knows. I used to be a figure skater for. In Colombia, wow! For, for 14 years, uh, I almost—I was really close to be a Colombian representation, but unfortunately, I had to—I had to leave. Um, That's like a whole other conversation. Very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, in the lead here. That's a big story. So, most talented person we ever had on the show. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah as, a, as a as an athlete, I knew I I, I was a like I was all my life as a competitor mm -hmm. and you have to earn that for yourself not for the rest of the world but like be like you know what yes I I think that we sh I messed up putting this person or yeah just own the mistakes that's just because uh, I think a, a lot of good coaches tend to do that they do uh, they, they tend to do that learn from they obviously learn from their mistakes but admit that they made a mistake and that's okay and that's okay, that's, okay. That's, that's fine you know when yeah. people see that from a coach you don't you don't only see 
see him or see her as as a coach you see them as a leader, mm -hmm. as, as a leader. And, and then if if the coach say that you you can see like your your players are gonna are gonna start like also owning mistakes so and that's okay that's okay to 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 say hey i messed up or hey tonight was in my night yeah so and, but one thing that that i do kind of uh, admire about the team mm -hmm. is that they don't really throw anybody else under the bus they, they may not admit their mistakes but they don't really like like you just mentioned about it wasn't really criticizing Red. No, it was just, no, it was he just was in, just saying, "Hey, just this, saying, this, this, what, what this, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. and this is what fine. happened, and that's, that's fine. fine. It's a, we're, they're a team, and yeah. that's how soccer is. It's not like what I used to do that right. it was only because, me, because and yeah. it's my fault. It was my fault, yeah. you know. Because so, some of us are connected some more than others to yeah. some of the people in the team and their spouses and their girlfriends and whatever. And, and but you haven't really heard any even a, an inkling of dissent from the team. They're all very, very positive. They all like each other. Uh, they don't really criticize Josh Wolf all that much. Uh, Josh Wolf doesn't criticize his players all that much. So he does when <laughs> but sometimes. <laughs> sometimes no, I noticed not, you had a, you had a bit of an expression on your face. I'm not was, was no because there. because he, no because it's true. He threw. He says uh, I forgot that he was uh, Diego Fagundes. Diego that wasn't performing and things like that that. Called out Zardis at that same time as he well. Called in, he, yeah. he called yeah. out yeah. Uh, what's his name, uh, Romagna. He said Romagna, Romagna was uh, fellow Colombian. Overweight. Fellow Colombian, by the way. Yeah. Overweight. That's the, the word. At the same time, he was, was, yeah. he and, was overweight. And then he and then Romagna put up a post uh, of him being a shirt. buff. Oh yeah. I didn't see it. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't you know, see. I wish I could be as overweight as you, Juan Romano. Sure. I, <laughs> who, knows who knows what is the so. what is the ex uh, the what are the requirements for 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 them? Who knows? Wow. And I, and I think know. I think you guys are getting at something interesting here. Like, okay, Jorge and I were talking on on the way over here um, about Josh Wolf, and um, I kind of said year one. For the most part, I don't think this team was very good. I don't think the roster was very strong, so I kind of give him a pass on year one. But the one thing that did get on my nerves year one was was this, not admitting mistakes, not admitting when, when the team was playing poorly, this constant like kind of defense, guards up, I'm going to always try and like be on the attack in a press conference. That, that annoyed me year one. It, it still annoys me to this day. I'm not necessarily a wolf out person. I, where do you stand on, on wolf out, Laura? No, I I mean he's in. <laughs> wolf in. Yeah. There is, he's he's okay. in. He's in. Okay. Like we said earlier, yeah. I think I agree on on the sense that maybe uh there should be a like a sporting director that maybe mm. can like that now can that, get now a little bit of accountable some sense. Okay. Or, accountability. Or, yeah. or bring somebody that can he, like Guy him maybe I don't I don't know what's the deal because with because he's the, the interim the yeah. interim guy and and Sean Rubio is the interim sporting director. Usually having a and coach neither one as of them a sporting has, director doesn't work. That's usually right. not a good, it's usually not a good deal. Yeah, so good I think once the once a once the season is over and they you know look look at it from afar and see what's best for the team, obviously they're going to have to get a full time sporting director, um, and. You know, I guess we'll get into it a little bit now, but uh, the roster needs to change a little bit. Probably, mm -hmm. uh, they need to address the salaries that are there. We saw an increase. Some of us on our season tickets. Okay, that, that, this is gonna be an interesting so, conversation. I, I want to table that for just a yeah. quick second, if we can, Jerry. Can we roll the uh, the highlights from uh, from Saturday's game against uh, RSL? Because I want to I want to get to those real quick, and we'll get to the uh, the juicier stuff here yeah. in a minute. There's so that. you know it, it's probably one of the as as good a roster as Austin has at the moment when they started. So and they played they they came out pretty aggressively. Yeah, I actually think before the RSL goal, I think Austin yeah, had seen it with was the they were doing team. a good yeah. job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it and was working. That's why when he put Maxi, I I, I didn't. I I didn't. I really. didn't see a. Bad thing. I mean, yes, like I say, Sardis, it, it's been yeah, that, better, that, but... Yeah, that goal by 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 Rubio, I mean, he... Rubio is a really good player, good. by he the is. way. Yeah, he, very I good mean, player, he used yeah. to be... He used to be kind of kind of a regular call-up for the men's, U.S. men's national mm. team. 
With Guatemala um, now, though, right? And I believe so. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But that was a little bit of a fluky game, fluky play. Yeah, you uh, end up with Ring somehow marking two players. Yeah, on this ha- I don't understand yeah, how that happened. I, I, yeah, and not, Wolf, well, he was critical of Cascante and John Gallagher in on the, the post match. Yeah, yeah. saying that those two needed to, yeah, to have helped out there. He, he, he's right. I, I think it's fair. Um, and then there's that. that that's West. really, Ooh. really good. Um, Good for Fagundes. And he is so amazing. good at those oh. free kicks. He's really he's good. He actually, I was reading an article on, on shots taken directly from free kicks. He is by far and away the best in MLS at oh, that wow. exact right there. Wow. Shots yeah. from free kicks. That's why I don't understand why he didn't do it. He doesn't uh, do it enough, though, right? He didn't do it the, the second time. He just, I was like, no. Yeah, and then this shot by Rigoni was kind of a, kind of a shot out of nowhere. Yeah. That probably... In any other circumstance, ninety nine percent of the time it goes in, but this season is this season for us. <laughs> yeah. This right and here, that, was that, the that job. right there, that that encapsulates the season to me. <laughs> really, you does. have a shot on goal. Your uh, best player. But, but he <laughs> went, but look how many, how many of the real Salt Lake he has around. Just one, side two, note, three, four. I yeah. love the long throw from Lima. These are so dangerous. He's that led really, to the winning goal really on, good at that. On Wednesday. He is excellent he's, at it. He's the, the best ah, one that, that they have. That was so close. That was really close. You could tell De Rossi was so much. Yeah. He was, it was in his night. Yeah. and, and It was in his night. And here's Stuver being Stuver. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for him, the games would be much more distance. This would not be a team in, in the playoff. Standings yeah, not right even now. close. Or, or yeah. not for, for Brad Stuver. And so... You know, that's what a save. Yeah, a couple of saves, uh, and and this one in particular eh, was kind of a weak shot. Masita, uh, that's what David would say if he yeah, were here. Uh, Mas- Masita. Yeah, and so, but then a bad clearance ends up. Yeah, you RSL yeah, just, just, just straight back clearance. down yeah. like that. Yeah, it just yeah. yeah. But again, self inflicted, I think, these two goals really. Yeah. You think about it, the marking on the first one and then a, just a poor right. clearance. And, and one, one thing that I did want to, want to note is uh, obviously you can see the, the crowd there mm-hmm. that it a lot of people left after the rain. Yeah, delay. it was it two was, hours. Was Not everybody hours. was going to wait. No, no you guys, though, you guys stayed. No, we stayed till we the stayed. end. We stayed. Yeah, still till the end. <laughs> we left the And one of you two stayed for the, for the press conference. Yeah, 1230. Well, yeah, that was, that was, late that was really <laughs> late. But, um, be, but I, I think uh, one one thing that we also talked about on on the drive over here, Eric, is is what what how the rain delay affected each team, mm-hmm. and I think it affected Austin FC more than it did RSL because RSL had the lead. But according to Wolf, it didn't affect them. Uh, that's Wolf. Do you do you doing Wolfism? I'm, I'm just, do you guys I'm just saying that what he said. Down? No, I'm just saying the facts, and that's yeah, what he said. I, I don't. I, and this, then this that, is then the, then Cascan, they, 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 it did it did kind of like it, affect it. It does affect. I mean, you you're an athlete. When when you you have um, an internal script in your head that are going to no know, man, it messes minutes, up with your mind. You it does. 15 I mean, min- hello, 15 oh, minutes of time. And then 45 minutes. And when you have interruptions like that, you start thinking about things. That what did I do wrong in the first half? What did I do wrong? They don't take a nap. Look at that one of Ethan. Oh, that, yeah, was that, was, oh, that was close. That was really close. I was like, Dee. That was super close. That's just. That's just, I mean. What did you guys think of, of Redis starting this game over Finley? Finley uh, started against Minnesota, was, did only play 60, 61 minutes in that game. I think he was a little quiet. Uh, you hardly ever heard his name. Mm. Uh, being so you're mentioned. okay with, with Redis starting this one? Uh, prob- they I mean, didn't mark any difference, they didn't honestly. Really, it was neither a positive or a negative, to be honest. He was just yeah. kind of there. Didn't really provide any a spark or anything like that. Only so. one pass, I think. Le- the very, one, the yeah. one that uh, he, he didn't end up inside. With oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, so... so. Yeah, that's creation kind of, of a, kind of a pedestrian game, I think, for him. But I think he's fine. I mean, either you start him or you start Ethan. Ethan. There, there are, I yeah, mean, Austin FC, what would you see now? It looks like nearing a full fitness. He's pretty close. Pretty I think. close. Yeah. I would be surprised if he didn't start against Sporting KC on Saturday. Right. So you do have kind of your full complement of wingers, number 10 type players. And so it'll be interesting to see. 
I do want to point out, since I always point out when he struggles, Rigoni did have the assist on this on this goal on the uh, on the corner kick. Did have three shots in this game uh, for point three expected goals. Wolf Wolf loves his xG. So I really like uh, what's his name. Uh, it starts with an L. I forgot. I'm really bad. Uh, Lima. No. Uh, the one that was substituted for Rigoni. Lundqvist. Him. That's how you pronounce yes, the name, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Lundqvist. It's not Lundqvist. I, I it's Lundqvist. I can't pronounce him. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I like him to start. I like do, for too. The I do. For we the do. next do. Yeah. game. Yeah. Then it starts Sardis. Then, um, hmm. Wolf, are you taking notes? We're giving free advice yeah. here. And then, after that, He's giving it away. just put the triple Argentinians in a good mood. And then just... Wait, triple Argentinians? Who's the, the three guys. So Uruti, Rugoni, and uh, is and Uruguayan, right? No. Uruti? No, he's no. Argentinian. No, he's no he's they're the three Argentinians. Uh, that's what Diego exactly from, happened. He's from Uruguay. Ah, yes, Diego, yeah. Okay, okay. But that's exactly what he did on Real Sad Lake. And the energy that those three got in, in the field. I think they UK played really well. Together. Together. Please. Put them so together. So you're, you're a pro, pro Rigoni then? Is that what I'm hearing? When when he's playing with the guy Sebastian, who's got one goal in like 20. When, when he's playing with Sebastian when and he's playing with Ruti, Sebastian yes. And Ruti, yes. I uh, yeah, because there is chemistry there. Like you can see it. You you can see these guys will like look at each other. They know what they're thinking. They know how to play. Like I honestly really like that. Like and, and Uruti's always played well with other Argentinian fellow countrymen. And, and anywhere he goes. When he's when he doesn't have his guys with him, for, mm. he's he kind feels of, off. He feels off. I feel off. like he feels off. That's why I'm saying. That's why I'm saying. Okay. Like, I feel like if if you put those three together, like he did on Real Salt Lake when the Rusi got in and then all the frenzy he caused, and then the other two, like with that help, that's what he made it. A good okay. second half yeah, for us to for Real Salt Lake, I think. And and I would. I'm sorry for Minnesota. And I would I'll also add Diego in there, even Me though too. he's not Argentinian. Whoa. But he has struggled this year, probably through no fault of his own. I think he's his injury is not okay. as he's not as healthy as he Injuries normally is. Have played a role, but he, he's yeah. played 536 minutes so far this season. Got just one assist. Remember, this was a guy with 12 he, he, assists, yeah. six goals last season. Right. So 18 goal contributions, just one so far this season. If you want to look at why Austin FC's attack is struggling this season versus last it's because season, of I think the lack of, of production there, I think it is playing a big role. Yeah. How how mm -hmm. worried are you guys that, that Fagundes? A lot. You're, so I you're worried. I love Fagundes. Do you think I it, is it Fagundes. just injuries? He's such a, oh, he's, he's incredible. Oh, man, dude. he's so good. Yeah, I, we're big fans here of, of, of Fagundes, to be honest. Yeah. He's, he's real down to earth. I love him. He, like he, everybody he really is, is a great like, guy. He really is. Uh, but but even he, he's got to admit inside of himself that this is not his season, just like Austin FC's season. So do you think and it is just injuries, though, uh, that we, like, as the season progresses, he gets more fit, that... Will be fine. The goals and assists will come. I think, I so. think so too. Okay. Yeah. I, I think, think so I too. Think so. I think so too. He, I agree. And, and I think the the injuries that he that he has uh, this season, he's not really an injury prone guy. No, he's a workhorse. He's, he's a workhorse guy. That he's played well. So I think it's a like I said, the injury has affected him more than he probably thought it would. Uh, he's not. He's not as. Uh, as speedy as, as, as he speedy. normally is. Yeah, that's the uh, word. He's not as shifty as he normally is. Um, there was one instance where he ha had the ball ahead of everybody else, and he actually took a break to pass it away. Which he a, never a, used to no, do. No, a normal Diego would what go straight to the goal. That, that is a very and, good good spot there, Jorge. And, yeah. and that, that to me says that he, he doesn't want, probably understands his limits at the moment. Health wise, that he mm -hmm. knows that he can't do that run, or maybe he's a little messing with his head that he can't go all out, or he's going to injure himself again. And so there's a lot of I think there's a lot of things in play but I think with him he can right come now. Back. So you think so? Hope. Do you think? So, are you concerned at all that maybe some of the comments that were made by by Josh Wolf early, earlier in the season might be impacting his? You know, I mean, enthusiasm for the game right maybe, now. Maybe, um, maybe you never know. You don't know what's in his mind. Um, maybe. It's, I, don't I mean, know. it's possible. I think those were some pretty 
dumb comments, uh, quite frankly. Probably <laughs> not to, to call, call out a bus. Here. I yeah. know. I one of your yeah, more popular I mean, players, but you're we, never going to win the court of public opinion. Wolf versus Fagundas. The, the no. public will no, always side with no, Diego, one hundred percent in that yeah, debate. I mean, he's got his own chant. I mean, you know, you don't really, yeah. you don't really mess with this guy. I you try to be constructive. I believe, I believe he can come back. I, I think, I, I think back. he'll come I think back. He come back. I, I think just, it, it's just that it's it's una racha. Yeah, I, it's, it's it. a, I don't know how. How you will say it it's, in English? It's, a, it's just that uh, uh, just a temporary the moment okay. that maybe he's passing through. You know, all the athletes have that. If yeah, you, it, like you it, will hit a slump at some point. It, all the baseball athletes, is called the yips. The yips. All yep. the athletes. Are, come on, LeBron James. <laughs> they go through Leo waves. had a bad racha in in PSG. Uh, like that's that's just normal. It just, it just happens. Yeah. Now, now you're you're. An athlete, Laura. So, what do you do used when you're to, in a bat? Used to. You, oh, well, hey, hey, that's more than <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> you're, more you're the more say. athletic than the so, three of us. So, <laughs> so what, what can you do in a moment like this to, to try and go from the bad moment to getting back to a good moment? Like, what does what do you have to do mentally, physically? Like, what can you actually do in this situation? I honestly think that uh, this, if if like they say that the club has a lot of resources. Uh, they have, a, they have a psychologist, psychologist on staff. Yeah. To, to stop messing around with your mind, to okay. let to si to mute the outside world and including your coach, including your <laughs> parents, including the media, <laughs> the media, including your fans, no, including no, everybody. No, 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 it's oh, pay attention to us. But we, need, we need views on this show. Yeah. So we don't want to lose Just any, any views. Just <laughs> and then I think he'll get it. Okay. I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be fine, but... Uh, you know, it, the fan base is impatient right now. I think starting a little bit, but it's not because but of him. It's it's, it's, a, not because of it's him. a collection but of it, events. It, it's and just results. one thing okay. after another yeah. after another. Well, okay. we have Rado that got his his uh, his uh, shoulder injured. Another yeah. center back, the one yeah. they brought in to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's injured, yeah. and so put Keith Keller. Throw, hey, I'm, I, I'm, I, for I'm, I'm for I'm it. I'm for it. I mean, Why not? What? I'm not not exactly throwing me into the to the Lions. But bring him in. Just he's, put him. He's, Why he's not? Playing, if you trusted him well. enough to start the season as, as you know, it, coming why, in immediately. Why not he played put pretty him well why, last season, too. Why not to put him? Yeah, why? Why? Yeah, that, that's a weird one to me. I don't know if Wolf is handling this situation I, particularly well, yeah, to be honest. I, 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 I could give him a break at Austin FC, too, maybe for a match or two. But I, if you I, trusted I, him I, enough. I thought he'd be back by now. Yeah. Absolutely. I thought he'd be back by now. Give him three, four games in Austin FC, get his mind straight and everything, and he's still there. I'm That's not... Uh, especially we, we talked about with this all these guys on, getting injured. I don't know, but Brett is using him. Bison well. is injured, too. <laughs> so, well, we, we talked about this on, on, um, on last week's show, Laura, but it does seem like players... It takes them a while to earn the trust of Josh Wolf. We see it with new players that come in. I mean, it took... You know, Radovanovic a, a, a while before he actually started to play. Gite, whenever he came over originally, took him a while before he started to play. And now with Keller, and I think you could maybe say Emro Tarek in this in this company as well, a couple early mistakes, and we just they've just been banned. Banned. Ba ban. 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 Banned. They've been banned, yeah. basically. Yeah. And it, it just seems like... I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but that's that's how we look. That, exactly. That's how we look. I, that's how, from the outside, from I think the outside. that is how we look. From the outside, right? He has his motives. He has his uh, own opinions. We and know he has that's up. just, he's the coach at the end of the day. We know, you know? he has opinions. So, no but no, that's how he seemed. That's what I heard from people commenting that that's how he, he, he seemed from the outside. Yeah. yeah. And what's what's strange is that he, he's always harping on, uh, on the, 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 Austin FC, the Austin FC plays the really good practices and they're really mm -hmm. good practices and you earn practices your minutes you earn your them, you, you earn your starts That's and your definitely. minutes and practice and practice practice mm. That's great but when you don't see the results from that practice in an actual game uh, I, th I don't think you can rely on that anymore. <laughs> it's up to you because the, you gotta the game take, you, you got to take, you gotta take a chance. So if if there, if Josh Wolf has any guys in his doghouse, stop it. <laughs> stop <laughs> Stop banishing these guys. Bring them in. Be a leader. Show these guys. Okay, you made a mistake. Kip Keller himself has admitted on on film on the, in the media yeah. he that he up. messed up. 
that's the type of player you really want. Like you just finished saying that he's not really – he's looking out for the best of, for his team, not himself. And I do wonder, like, and psychologically, what you make oh, that, that mistake and then you're that, banned. That definitely <laughs> messes with you. Four months? But like, he didn't yeah. – I, I feel like he didn't with him. He continued he playing like – It he did has. not mess with his playing, but – it must affect him not being able to be at least on the okay. bench. I think Frost he would have to. Yeah, he finally did get on the bench for, for this game. Right, for, but yeah, before then, yeah, he, yeah, because banned, of the the six 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 six. I can't pronounce their name. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Lundqvist. Lundqvist six six. I was like, what are you? What are you talking about? <laughs> and so, <laughs> and that's another guy that I think. Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> that I, I think has been slow to to be. Uh, Trusted by mm -hmm. Josh Wolf, I think um, he's really blossomed in the switch to that three four three as as a wing I think back. he's more of I that kind of more player. of an attacking yeah. get wide whip in the crosses. I right. think he's more so, of that kind of. So player. really, yeah. you should adapt your your strategy and your lineup to the team that you have now. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do it the other the other way around. And, and they they have been playing well with with the back three. Yeah, I didn't. I'm and just so, a little perplexed why they went away from that for this game. Um, I don't. I guess just due to maybe the lack of center backs. I mean, it was interesting, and Wolf mentioned this in the press conference. Defensively, it was definitely like a four four two, but in possession, Lima would kind of tuck in, Gallagher would go high and wide, so it did still kind of look back three ish in possession. Right. But I wonder, like, especially on these two goals they conceded. Where players are kind of unsure of their positioning. Yes, it's how, it, that's how it seemed right? like they didn't we, seem we, comfortable. Yeah, we, we, it feels we, like, when like you, when it you felt do like it, when, when you, you like a soccer player. Okay, he's asking me to do this. Sure, I'll do it. But I, it might it it. it that's how it, I felt. It, it, I felt yeah. I had that sensation too when I was like watching uh, there, and then he'll be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. and then they they're like, okay, like. I don't know they, they, they if, don't if, know if where it to felt, be, I think. yes, I don't, don't know, know if it felt like natural for them to play. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. So do you think, or do you think that might be a result of just too much changing and, and moving things around from Wolf? Too much in-game changing. Mm. I, 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 I don't I, know I, if it in-game, but like, it seemed like that's how it, they started. That's how, it's, it's the transition for me mm -hmm. that from, from when they, when they want to attack, they put three in the back. When they when they want to defend, they put four in the back. Mm -hmm. That that makes the center backs not really know what's which, going on. Which, what, which what, one what is that which? We gonna, yeah, what are we? Do gonna? I go up? Do you go up? It, it's especially with a quick team like RSL and yeah, a, quick a quick quick player quick like direct attack. Yeah, that that is that is that is a death wish to for, for mean, to to defend like and, that. And on to, at the end of the day, that's a that's a that's a wolf's decision of how and then the. I'm pretty, I mean, pretty sure the guys just like go and follow what, whatever they did. The they just, I mean, they don't want to sit on the bench and be <laughs> doghouse. Yeah, yeah. Coach, whatever you say, I'll do. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 pretty quite much. A, uh, it's a tough doghouse to get out of, the Wolf doghouse. Yeah. I think and, that's and, fair to say. And to be fair, Austin FC, I mean, there's a lot of chatter right now. Oh, Wolf out and this kind of stuff. Uh, but they're not that bad in, if you think about it. They haven't really been blown out by anybody. They have the defensive mistakes team. here and there. Still They're a still team. somehow a playoff team. They're I better honest, than the Dynamo. So I honestly that. think that this is a good roster and it could be better. Yes. So what are your what are your impressions overall of the season to this point, Laura? Are you of like this has been a disaster? This team no. is, or is it? Is it like you think? Can, all things considered, the injuries, some of the uh, it could be. I mean, I don't. I I personally don't um, think that uh, the BC schedule is an excuse, just because. Because uh, I've used that as an excuse. So you think <laughs> I'm, I'm wrong? Because <laughs> I said on the I show too many games in May. <laughs> let me tell you, uh, I don't think so. Why? And then this is one of the things that I was telling uh, the press conference guys before, like we interviewed some of the guys. Mm -hmm. They were talking about how BC has been for MLS, and it's just That's like good. it's like a lot. And da, 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 da. I can't even handle and it. Just as a reporter, I, I'm tired. I t I have a job. I go to school, <laughs> and then I also report for Austin FC yeah. just because I love reporting. 
But honestly, I think that, uh, oh, I have two jobs, actually. Uh, <laughs> I actually sometimes see the, the visitor teams at the firm one. Oh, well, that's right. I do. I do. Yeah. Wow. I do, but I don't I tell. Do you, ever, do you ever sleep? Or you just <laughs> no, I actually don't. <laughs> okay. I actually I have time to party. <laughs> I have, I have, that's what I'm saying. It, BC is not an excuse. If you ever want MLS to be competitive, like a league, I'm not like I'm not comparing. Mm. But if you want this league to be one of the best ones, one of the top ones, if you wanted that, which I think that's what they are trying to do, and that's why they let Allegedly, this BC yeah. schedule. Mm. Maybe that's what they're trying. I don't know. You need to compete all the time. So. Maybe they're not used to. He's, he was saying that uh, this is the first time that he saw an MLS having like he did, so that, many. Well, like, did say that at the press yeah, conference. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So many games. Okay, just. And I was you saying have there, applauding. Players. Like, go, King. Go, uh, go on, King. I love what you're saying now, Josh. But, but I don't you, agree. You I don't agree. I don't agree. Don't agree. You have, you have, you have, you have to enough look, players. Yeah, you have to look you, at it competitively, comparatively with EPL. EPL has the full schedule of no games. No EPL, but like uh, at least like for example, Mexican league also. Mexican DC. league, sure. Uh, in South America, league, in South show, America, uh, like so. in South America, you. Yeah, we you don't have, need, really talk about. You it. Have, I don't know what that the is. The current right? Coca-Cola yeah. champion <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> oh. Is he around? <laughs> he's. Jorge's around. We should see if we can get him away from her. He'll listen after. But yeah, I mean, like I'm saying, like you can't compare, of course. But at the same time, if you ever want to become that competitive. Like competitively, mm. you you. <laughs> you oh, oh no! Jerry. We forgot we have Jerry here. Now the show is ruined. But anyway, no. you you need to compete. Yeah, the, but, but, you need but, to. But, but, they have they have uh, in Colombia, for example. I can talk for Colombia. They have. Uh, Liga Bet Play, they have two two championships during the Libertadores. year. Libertadores. They have Libertadores. They have um, the Sud Copa Sudamericana. Copa Sudamericana. They have uh, in Colombia, is, I forgot what's the other league, uh, Postobón, I think. Copa Postobón, which mm. is like the, B, the, B, like the B and the A teams playing mm. together. Right. So like, I, I don't know. And the point I was trying to make about the EPL was mm. wasn't the level of, of, no, of talent. No, that's another level. That's, that's <laughs> way another level. That's but I was talking about <laughs> the, the, the tournaments that they play. Uh -huh. They play FA Cup. Uh -huh. They play champions, the top team play Champions League. Champions League. Europa League. league. Yeah. Uh, they play the league themselves. You need, you need Carabao yeah, Cup. You, you so need. there's a lot of games that really get played. You need to go And they're used to it. So MLS, if... I, I totally agree. If they want to get better, they better stick, get used to it. And I, the thing is that you have to let them spend. You have to loosen the financial restrictions. And, I, I, I and this is them. this is something that that I've kind of complained about MLS. They're too top heavy. Their DPS get almost all the money, uh, and so they have, you know, regular yeah, that play I, that, everywhere that, I, else. I, I, that that was something that it cost me when, when I started I, I watching saw, MLS. I think Jorge put out the tweet of how much. The salary is for Leon compared to LAFC. Mm. LAFC has a bigger salary than Leon. Who played better, Leon? Because they have more. Av their average. The average of the uh, all the players the have like about better. the same. They're playing. They're paying Carlos Vela and a stupid amount of money for not very much in return. Uh, no, this he, season, but last season he, he, he sells play. tickets. The Mexican. Uh, uh, fans would love to go and would watch LAFC all the time to watch Vera, but he doesn't really do that much. Boanga does a lot more, and Buanga nobody oh, really yeah. knows That's about that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and so uh, you know, th and that's the issue I have with 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 MLS that really they should honestly get rid of the DP uh, designation yeah, or I don't, or I don't, expand it. I don't. Yes, somehow. I don't think I've seen it. 
somewhere else, right? I, I almost certain. I think that almost nowhere Dave else in the world brought in to like allow the Galaxy to sign new players back in the but day. I think, but I think the league, but I think the MLS is beyond that. I think yes, a lot of guys yes, yes, yes. have think, oh, they're, they're in Europe. They're in the latter stages of their career. They come in. They say, yes, oh, it'll no, be easy, but you know, and yeah, it's, it's not easy. No, you that's every you, yes. Everybody talk about like they underestimate the MLS. They underestimate MLS is, yeah, is really competitive. It is really right physical. Toronto. It is really fast. They talked about Insignia. He did not expect it to be as competitive. Mm -hmm. He thought it was going to be a cakewalk all for him. All of them. All, all of them. All of them. All, all almost everyone. So I think. Theme, so sure. I think they're. I think are MLS, all players. Yes. <laughs> when they came, yeah. uh, Urruti. Vic, uh, Urruti. No, Urruti. No, Urruti. No, I'm sorry. Rigon. Di Rusi. Di Rusi. Di Rusi and Rigoni. Di Rusi. Both of them say, yeah, like there were not that many like expectations for MLS, but. And it's hard. There it is. Definitely. Yeah, and so uh, hopefully that'll be addressed. Uh, that I would like to see it's either eliminated or expanded. Okay. Either one would, would work for me because. Oh man, if they eliminate that, it. Well, the thing it's, is, if you eliminate it and you still have the salary cap, that's a problem. Yeah, you yeah. have to you have to expand. You have the to salary. But, but, but unfortunately, if that happens, we're going to get what was happening in EPL. Who, who are the top teams? Manchester City. Chelsea, I don't know. Thank money, you. money you wise, Thank money, you money you wise, not not competitive <laughs> wise, but you know who the top team teams and who are the mid level and who are probably going to get mm -hmm. relegated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's because of money and there's no salary yeah. cap yeah. like in the NFL, NBA, etc. Oh yeah, they they all have competitive salaries with each other. It's mm -hmm. just coaching. Same as in Mexico. Mexico, like Mexico has pretty competitive. Mm -hmm. Colombia too. Com I mean, comparative with each other. Kind too. of. And MLS does in a sense, but like I said, if if the ownership group has the money, they can pretty much sign whoever the three DP players are, are and it won't affect the salary cap. Mm -hmm. But it's the rest of the salary cap that's a problem. Yeah. And so Austin yeah, is it's, it's unfair. It's unfair it, it, to see some players that are better than the ones that are getting paid a million or something mm -hmm. and getting it's like it, Yeah, it it doesn't it's not fair. It's I not feel like fair. it's not fair. It's, it's, it's not, not fair. fair. Well, I think you get to that point where you have, yeah, it's very top-heavy, like when you're comparing LAFC to, to Lyon, and yeah, like LAFC have the, the big, big names at the top, but Lyon are distributing that salary more evenly throughout the rest of the squad. Correct. And you can see, like, especially across two legs, they can go to their bench and everyone that's coming on. It's almost a like-for-like it. like like player. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's you're the not, difference. You're not that. losing quality yeah. of no. when, you, when you bench a guy. You just that guy's not having a good game. You're going to put in another one and and move on. And move on. But with MLS, when you substitute somebody, oh man, it hurts because it hurts. it's like money. It's money that mm -hmm. you see sitting down. Right. And, and Unfortunately, it sounds and, bad, and, but that's and, how it and, is. And, and yeah. then you have situations like Shakiri. He's one of the top DP players in the league, and he hasn't produced nothing. Except and so <laughs> one, one game where he did one he did game, <laughs> but look at Rigoni. Same situation. One mm -hmm. of the top play, top paid teams uh, players in the in the team, and he hasn't produced anything. So these guys, because of what for whatever reason they're not playing well, and it opens them up but to I think criticism. He, he could. I think he could. He could, but at the I, but, I but for the, the moment, more. but for the moment, I, I'm not. I don't know if I'm quite there it, with you. Nobody, it, nobody. His high salary <laughs> and his lack of production opens up guys like <clears throat> Rigoni, like Shakiri to criticism. Yeah, Unfair absolutely. as it is. Mm -hmm. Unfair as it is. But that's just the structure of, the, of MLS. That's how it is. That's how it is. And and so you expect more of your DPs. You don't expect him to be benched like who bench, like Dynamo, benched their DP. Mm -hmm. They already play that yeah, guy. Yeah. But they're paying him. Where's the return in that? You can you a lot you of can, money. You just can go into on every bench, single in team that, that's and how find it's something. It sounds yeah. bad, but mm -hmm. that's how it is. Yeah. Okay. I think we, we're getting a little little short on time here. I do want to make sure we get to one of the biggest stories from this past week, though. Talking about the uh, the season ticket prices yes. going up for Austin FC for for 2024. In some cases, by as much as 14 percent. Yikes. Um, and that for a team that is just barely hovering above the uh, the playoff line right now. Um, I want to get both of you guys' takes on this. I'll start with you, Jorge. Yeah. Just how 
concerned should the front office be right now about really just kind of antagonizing it, its fan base? By, They're by not worried. Like this. You don't think they care at all? I don't care at all. <laughs> okay. There's a 25,000 waiting list. Mm -hmm. So any 5,000 fans are not happy with their season tickets because they Italy. went up and they're giving up. They have 20,000 people ready to pounce on them. Uh, in, in Austin Anthem's ticket exchange, I'm sure Los Verdes has their same thing. They, people are openly advertising. If you don't want your season tickets, give them to me. Sell them to me. They're open, openly saying. And so it, it's just that the, the novelty is not wearing off for whatever reason. It's mm -hmm. still the place to be. Some people don't even care about the game. They just want to be the, in, in the moment. <laughs> a little bit of FOMO there. Are you, are you concerned but, uh, at all about the, like, whenever you lose some of the people that have been there from the beginning, yes. are you concerned about maybe losing something as far as the culture and kind of the atmosphere goes whenever these, these original fans are being replaced potentially by, by newer fans, especially newer fans that can perhaps afford a higher level of ticket price. I'll put it this way. I know like in, in the EPL, I'll, 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 prices have yeah, gone up. It's hurt the atmosphere. Yeah, I'll basically. put it this way. Why Why are they on the waiting list? Why weren't, Why didn't they get a chance to be a season ticket holder? Because they waited. Mm -hmm. Because they're not as enthusiastic. So the waiting list is people wanting those tickets, but maybe not because, of their, because they're fans, but because, you know, they, there's a profit to be made for those mm -hmm. and there is a profit to be made I, I will i will not say that there is not in the supporter section the supporter section is pretty they, they, it's pretty well policed that you pay you do you do not get a profit from those tickets mm -hmm. but everywhere else it's open open season mm -hmm. and so because of that I, I i don't think they're i don't think the new fans will be as enthusiastic <clears throat> about carrying on the traditions, about growing the culture, but I think as long as long as the supporter section doesn't and the supporters section tickets didn't go up all that much, they went up slightly like they mm -hmm. all did, but not as much not as not the fourteen percent, not the fourteen percent in everywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if you but if you shell out four or five thousand dollars a season ticket. And then you end up paying 14% more. That's what I'm doing some math here. About $200 more per season. It's not that bad. No. Okay. It's not so that bad. People should it's maybe put their pitchforks down a bit, do you think? Yeah, they, they should be, maybe calm down. But what I have a problem with is where's the money going? <laughs> we talked well. about this last week. <laughs> they, uh, um, Austin FC has some of the highest ticket prices um, in, in, yeah, in MLS. Right. I think it's the Everybody. fourth highest in the league, I'm not really? mistaken. I are they I the fourth have best it team? Been, been higher. <laughs> no. Uh, are they the fourth most, fourth most salary team? No. So where's the money going? I mean, if, if they want to invest in, in, a, in a culture that, that's been all the – I bring up Zardes again. He loves playing in front of these of, of the fans here, but sooner or later, that forty three game um, uh, sellout streak is going to come to an end. What's going to happen after that? Mm -hmm. I mean, people still go because they want to experience a new team. Uh, you know, all, uh, this is a place to be and all that kind of stuff. But sooner or later, winning has to come into the equation. It, it absolutely does. For this to you know, 10, 15 years down the line. Right. What are your thoughts on this situation, Laura? I I, I don't know. I feel like Austin uh, started with such a right foot. Um, yeah. There's so much uh, things that the fan base put out there. Mm. Um, and then it just it's, it created it a, a, a line. A, a, it drew a line for the other teams around MLS. Particularly those in Dallas and Houston. Yeah, we did talk about everywhere, that also in the, everywhere, in the car. Everywhere. That was a lively conversation in the car. Right? Everywhere. I <laughs> could recorded that. Trust yeah, me. we could have recorded that. It's but. not only those two uh, neighbors. It's it's around the country. Uh -huh. And they see, they, they see the vibe. Everybody talks about the Q2 Stadium vibe. And that it's really hard. Well, if it increases, you have two options. Keep him or leave him. That's just how it is. 
Yeah. yeah, that's that's how and that's how it works. That's how it works. Uh, you have like you were saying, you have other people. They can they can join. I know a lot of friends uh, left the season tickets. They're mm. just like you know, which is whatever. Yeah, um, and they have a, a long list of. But that doesn't that mean to replace them. that the fun fun things will go away from at the Q2. Q2 has its, has magic, whatever, whatever. Uh, oh, I agree. Okay, so you think even if, so even if a higher ticket price brings in a more affluent bunch of, of individuals, you're not concerned about it diluting the atmosphere. You still think the atmosphere top-notch, Q2 is magic. I, I, I do, I mean, and I am telling you because that's how it is with, with my home team, America de Cali. We, we feel... This, the El Campin in Bogota and when we're a team of Cali. So we, and the same with Nacional. So like when you have a, a strong fan base, no matter if the tickets are expensive or not or whatever. They'll, they'll get in. People are going to go and pay to watch their team. Yeah. I, I, I do think you have you, you make a very good point there, Laura, but I also think you make a good, good point, Jorge. The winning needs to happen at some point. Because if it yeah, it's people sustained, are gonna say losing yeah. stretch for high high ticket prices, and especially if money isn't being reinvested in the squad, as as you pointed yeah, out, yeah, I mean that will will create. I mean, long term frustration. I know, I know that the, I know the the scheme that they wanted to do is they wanted to be more competitive, not as, not go after name guys, mm -hmm. but they may have to go now after name guys. You know, a name you know, doesn't hurt. A name, know. I mean, imagine, oh God, please hear me. A Benzema suddenly appears in the Austin FC's news press conference. Oh, wow. What would that do to the fan base? What would you ask, Laura? What would you ask? Uh, what, what would you do? What you would know, you do? I hate Real Madrid, uh, we, but he was the only hey, but person. But Benzema's Benzema. <laughs> I, mean, I love. He's one of the best. <laughs> oh, I mean, if Benzema comes, no, forget it. And so, no, you know. You know, drop drop Ragoni off back in back in uh, <laughs> back in Brazil yeah. where he came that, from. Oh, Bring that in that guy. Dumb. Bring in that He's talking guy. some sense right now, Laura. You gotta say. He's talking some sense. And what do you think right it's now. gonna do to the fan base, to the confidence of the of his teammates? His well, it's teammates? gonna happen exactly. Let me tell you, we saw it at uh, Houston. Hector Hector Herrera when he although, came. Although the Dynamo, the Dynamo Saturday, suck was, at the moment, but <laughs> yeah, but it in re reinvigorated. What did he bring? It. What what Energy, did it what did it do? Revitalize. It brought fans to the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It brought fans to the games. We we love to harp on on how Dynamo fans don't show but up to that, the games. But so, but, but, but I don't what feel they like right a, now they need that. They they Houston, need more players than not, just the Hector Herrera. I'm sorry, but Houston wasn't have like the full stadium like Austin. They do not. <laughs> they, they, they so I'm sorry, do not with that. all due respect, that's just how it is, right? Right. They bring Hector because of that. Yeah. Not because of anything else. Right. So I mean, of course, to, to I'm guessing to help the team out and everything. Well, I mean, he's but so but yeah, I mean, let's be realistic. He has been actually pretty pretty good. Yeah. When he came, when he came, I'm like, well, he he didn't do anything in Atletico, and then well, he's here, and then he helped yeah. out the team. So. Eventually, once he stopped going to the nightclubs, he did have a bit of that. Yeah, he just got there. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do that. All right, I think I think we are just about out of time here. Unfortunately, they're about to shut the lights off. Yep. On us here, yeah, yeah, they want to uh, kick us out. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we didn't have any time to discuss whatever we didn't this talk about this. This, I don't this know thing here. Hey, good job. Come on, man. I'm happy. I'm really happy for them. I was actually rooting for Leon. Um, yeah, I was. I, I'm contractually I was. obligated to be happy. I was. So. Yeah, so I'm not. Yeah. I, I actually was rooting out, for them. There yeah. were, I <laughs> rather, I am. Okay, you can take off the, oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. All right, well, hey, thank you, Laura, for, for stepping in. I thank in. you, you did so much. Excellent time, great time. I appreciate oh, thank it. You. Welcome back thank here. Thank you for letting me tell my story about figure skating. Oh, oh nobody knows yeah, we, that. <laughs> right, we're doing, we're, we got a new show, Figure Skating in Vivo. Figure Skating in Vivo. You're going to be on it. It's going to be great. But, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Of course. Great to have you here. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you to Club Deportes. Thank you, as always, to Jerry Lopez. The maestro behind the boards over there. Thank you to our fans. Producer. Uh, we'll do this again next week.